In some ways, I like the shoulder even better than the hip, and, and particularly since we can do this sometimes. So the, why shoulder resurfacing? Why not just a reverse shoulder, shoulder replacement, stemless shoulder? There's so many things you can do to the shoulder, and it's, it's such a wonderful joint to operate on. It has a perfect seam between the deltoid and pectoralis to get in. But I want to point out that the humeral head like the femoral head, it's just not a surplus part. It really, I don't know that we really have surplus parts. It's not like your gallbladder and things like that where you can get by well without it. And I, I think in some instances, it's just an unnecessary concession to convention and surgeon convenience. You can keep the humeral head and work with it if there's a provocation to do so. Here's a real early uh, resurfacing done by Dr. Townley. It was the f first complete resurfacing he did. He did this before he did a complete total hip. He did this in 1958 um, with polyurethane as the uh, glenoid component. He didn't do a, a complete hip resurfacing until 1960, also with polyurethane. Here's an early case. These did work out. This is what we use now. It's metal free, it's cementless. It's metal free because that's the ceramic coating. It's what turns it gold. It's a titanium that you put ceramic coating on. What are the advantages? Well, it's less intrusive or invasive, less blood loss, less infection probably anyway, but if you get an infection, it's easier to treat. You, you might even be able to retain the implant still. The advantages, well, it's going to be an easier revision if you have to. More likely you're going to get the anatomy restored better with center of rotation. And you can also do a resurfacing of the shoulder with the form of your hardware in the shaft. That's a definite pluses. It also has a natural feel, good proprioception, and you're going to get the, re the retroversion right on the shoulder if you do resurfacing, if you pay attention. That's not a given. Oops, what disadvantages? Yeah, well, it's hard. It's difficult exposure. It's got to be perfect, and you've got to have good bone. Maybe not great, perfect bone like needed on the hip, but pretty good. So we've done a lot of these over the many years it's been done. More were male than female, and they're, they're young, tend to be. A lot of long-term follow-up. Usually they're hemi resurfacing because you can put ceramicized materials against the native glenoid and get away with it. But, but sometimes you put a glenoid component in. It's hard to do because the humeral head's in your way. And sometimes I'll do it when there's no rotator cuff. And this is becoming less of a demand now with the reverse out there, but I'll still show it. Here's the treat diagnoses we had. No surprise on those. Those are the standard ones you'd have for any shoulder. Here's rotator cuff arthropathy. This patient didn't want to reverse. He'd had a bunch of operations. You can see he had a distal clavicle resection, attempts to fix his cuff. And so what you do here is you just take the whole subacromial arch to be the socket of your shoulder. And it, it, go, it glides on the glenoid itself and the subacromial arch. And you just use the whole shoulder as, as your glenoid socket. If you don't need great function, but some function, but if you need decent mobility and pain relief, and you really don't want a, a, a revision, this isn't gonna dislocate like a reverse might. You're not gonna have prosthetic problems for sure, because it's a pretty darn simple thing to do. So what are our results? Well, we had good patient satisfaction. We used a simple shoulder test. The pre-op was four, that scale goes to 12. We got it up to 10.5. Recovery was, time was pretty good too. Here's the real uh, meat of it though. All the numbers are good. You notice the, not so much for the cuff tear arthropathy admittedly. Pay attention to that pass score though. Patient acceptable symptomatic state. These patients are all the way to well. They're not just better. Surgeons have banked on people getting better and, and called that justification for their surgeries, but you really want people to get well. 
and really great with a hemiarthroplasty, pretty good when we used a, a, a glenoid component. It's way better than a stemmed hemiarthroplasty, and it's better than a, a total shoulder. It's better than a, a reverse, too. The reverses are pretty good, but they're not great on a pass score. The revisions were pretty uncomplicated uh, when necessary, and they're not very common either. Look at the low revision rate. So these are pretty good, and they're lower than the stemmed outcomes. So this is something to look at. Patient preference. We had people that had one of each. Not many, but some. And they tended to prefer the resurfacing uh, side over the stemmed side when this was the case. We've seen some preferences like that in knees and in hips, too. A couple of examples of that. The one case um, that's uh, on your right uh, was one where we <laughs> had a little hiccup, and we did a, and admittedly, so she had a conventional resurfacing on one side, but a cuffed hair on the other. And then you have a stemmed component and a total on the other side. Resurfacing is better than ream and run, which is the other option you hear about if you don't want to put a glenoid in. And here's why. If you use a resurfacing implant rather than a stemmed implant, you're going to preserve the bone. That's a good thing. You're also going to, you're going to have to get the, the retroversion correct. And you're also going to have less stress shielding. The ceramic surface is better than any stemmed component anyway, as far as biocompatibility and low wear. So if you're thinking about ream and run, you're going to do a hemiarthroplasty, give a shoulder resurfacing a thought. It's better. It's a better operation. It's more reliable. And once you learn how, it, it, it's, it's a good way to go. People ask, well, what about glenoid wear? Well, here's a long-term follow-up of where no glenoid component was used. We just put the ceramic. And we put dye in to sort of demonstrate things. You know, you get some glenoid wear. It, it wasn't a deal killer for most of these cases. Sometimes you have to go back, and you can see we added a glenoid uh, component. And we do that when necessary. There are failures. Here's an early failure. We did it for avascular necrosis. The avascular necrosis continued. The uh, resurfacing head fell off, had to put a stem component in. Here's one where the resurfacing component failed by the cuff failed. It came in, wasn't functioning very well. It worked for a while, then the cuff failed and had to re revise it to a reverse. That's a pretty good bailout. It does work. It's a better, I don't know where I think about the reverse, but look at the, uh, the custom-made reverse on one of our patients here. The whole scapula had to be reconstructed to have a base. When the reverse shoulder fails, it's no picnic. When one of those cuts out, you've got a real problem. And then that, there's an old Seattle shoulder constraint option. You don't want these cases. These are not good cases to have. So my conclusion is shoulder resurfacing is a, a durable, successful procedure. It's demanding. It requires experience, but it can work for you and your patient. Thank you.